Hey everybody, how's it going? Today, it's my pleasure to bring you a detailed, in-depth look at the 2013 Audi S7 Quattro. And this is going to be a detailed, in-depth review of the S7. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip and go over the performance data, and show you a bunch of the unique aspects of the interior as well as exterior. And before we begin, I'd like to give a big thanks and special shout out to Foreign Cars Italia, located in Charlotte, North Carolina, who allowed me to come out and film the 2013 Audi S7. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up, let her run. Now just like the standard A7, the S7 also comes standard with an integrated smart key access system, so you can wirelessly lock and unlock the vehicle by just keeping the key fob in your pocket. All you have to do is locate the little touch sensitive buttons on all four of the door handles to lock the vehicle. Just tap it. The vehicle will beep once, letting you know it's locked. Then after waiting a second, touch the touch sensitive pad behind the handle, and it automatically unlocks the vehicle. The exterior color is known as Brilliant Black, and features a very unique lunar silver diamond quilted leather interior with jet black accenting, black color accent stitching, as well as plenty of unique brushed aluminum trim found throughout. And along with that smart key system, there's also remote push button ignition via a little aluminum and red accented button located in the star console. All you have to do is put your foot on the brake and hit the button to start. The 2013 Audi S7 features electromechanical rack and pinion power steering that delivers a delightfully tight feel to it and nice balanced weight. It's a unique three-spoke steering wheel with soft supple leather trim and grip extensions up top and down below with unique white color contrast stitching, plenty of polished aluminum bright work coming across the airbag cover as well as the multifunction controls, and the unique S7 badging located down below highlighted in bright work and black piano veneer. As far as the transmission, standard and only option available is a 7-speed dual-clutch automated manual gearbox with sport mode activated down below, as well as manual shiftability by clicking it over or via the aluminum paddle shifters mounted on the back of the steering wheel. Put the vehicle in reverse, an integrated backup camera appears with guidance lines, and there's also two other cameras mounted on either side of the rear bumper, as well as three front-mounted cameras in the same configuration. Basically what that does, it allows you to get side profile angles same for the front, as well as a top-down view so you can see where the parking sensors are and where objects are in proximity to the car. All nicely accented in polished aluminum, leather, a leather shift boot with color accent stitching, and a black piano veneer housing. Now we're going to flip on the automatic LED headlamps, fog lamps, as well as the hazards. Naturally all four windows are fully automatic. And we'll check out the exterior, shall we? Audi's A7 first hit the market last year and has been a big hit ever since. It follows the same sedan coupe philosophy set by the Mercedes CLS and now shared with BMW's 6 Series Grand Coupe. This unique automotive category has created fresh new models that bring excitement to the luxury sedan market. Each sedan is derived from the respective brand's mid-size sedan offering. For the A7, the A6 makes up the bare bones and even shares powertrains, 
Therefore, many of the changes to the new S7 are quite similar to the S6. In general, just like the competition, the A7 costs more than its A6 derivative, but what you get is an edgy, aggressive premium sedan that not only turns up the excitement from a design perspective, but also brings about something a little bit more special to the table. The A7's styling is long, low, and wide with sleek lines, cut off rear, that tips a nod to classic hatchback and supercar styling without making it look retro. The A7 is a thoroughly modern car with Audi's modular longitudinal architecture and aluminum construction, making up about a quarter of the body panels. It also comes standard with Audi's Quattro all-wheel drive system, which normally splits the torque between 40-60% front and rear, or the extremes of 70% in front and 85% in the rear. The wheelbase for the A7 and the A6 is about 3 inches longer than outgoing models, which also helps give it a more comfortable and stable ride for longer traveling over rougher roads. For 2013, Audi introduces the new S7, a higher performance version of the A7 that replaces the standard supercharged V6 with a twin turbocharged V8. Its most direct competitors include the Mercedes E550 and CLS 550, along with the BMW 550i and 650i Grand Coupe. It's also the same engine used in the S6, Audi S8, and Bentley Continental GT V8, although the S8 and Bentley make more power with a host of hardware upgrades. I say higher performance in the S7 because there's also a new RS7 that recently debuted that takes the power to the 550 plus range, more along the lines of the new S8 and Bentley. Compared to its rivals, the S7 is arguably the best looking in the segment. Its sharp edged, aggressive styling seems perfectly proportioned, even compared to the standard A7. The S7's body really isn't radically different. The signature Audi single frame grille gets a unique treatment with twin horizontal chrome slats, restyled front fascia and side skirts, grey rear diffuser, quad polished exhaust, black brake calipers and even aluminum cap side mirrors. Other than that, the only way to really tell the S7 apart is the small badging front and rear with the V8T fender tags. Now for the hardware. The S7 first off gets a standard electronically adjustable air suspension. In its standard setting, the S7 rides 0.4 inches lower than the A7, and put the car in dynamic mode, it'll drop an additional 0.4 inches. On the highway, the car will automatically lower to dynamic mode to decrease wind resistance. Standard A7s also get an 8-speed electronically controlled automatic gearbox, while the S7, as I mentioned earlier, receives a more robust 7-speed wet dual-clutch transmission for more responsive gear changes. The electromechanical steering system can also be had with the dynamic steering that allows variable ratios adjusted by the driver. A brake-based torque vectoring system is standard, while Audi also offers a sport differential that allows mechanical torque, dispersing nearly all of the torque to one of the rear wheels for enhanced agility. Standard S7s come with 19-inch polished alloys, but there's a wide variety of styles and sizes available. This S7 features the optional 5 parallel spoke Star S design 20 inch forged aluminum alloys wrapped in summer performance tires measuring 265-35 front and rear. The S7's brakes are also larger ventilated discs that measure 15.7 inches in front and 14 inches in the rear. Carbon ceramics are also available. The standard brakes are quite grippy and can bring the car to a stop from 60 miles an hour in a very short 130 feet. The adaptive air suspension also features variable damping that can be tuned for a stiffer or more comfortable ride and will show that a little bit more in depth during the interior portion. There is also extra sound deadening underneath the vehicle for a quieter ride. Overall length is 195.6 inches with the width of 75.2 inches and a height of 55.9 inches. Total curb weight is around 4,435 pounds. And we're going to pop the hood. The S7 is powered by Audi's new all-aluminum twin-turbocharged 4.0-liter dual-overhead cam 32-valve V8 with direct fuel injection. As I mentioned earlier, it also powers the new S6. While it has some similarities to Audi's naturally aspirated 4.2-liter V8, it has a host of new upgrades to make it a more potent and efficient power plant. For starters, the twin-scrolled turbochargers and indirect intercooler provide the biggest grunt for the engine. They're mounted in the V of the engine between the cylinder heads. The crankshaft design carries over from the 4.2 liter but now has a reduced stroke with significantly reduced friction losses. There's also a new cylinder deactivation system that shuts off four cylinders at cruising speed, coupled to a standard auto start stop feature for better fuel economy. Power consists of 420 horses at 6400 rpm and 406 pound feet of torque at 1400 rpm. This translates to a 0 to 60 time of 3.9 seconds with a quarter mile time of 12.3 seconds at 112.1 miles per hour. As far as fuel economy, with a 19.8 gallon tank and premium fuel, expect a range of 17 city, 27 highway. 
Audi always seems to deliver an attractive and sporty interior. The S7 turns it up a notch with unique styling materials. Build quality is exactly what you'd expect out of a car of this class, and interior fit and finish is excellent with solid feeling panels, soft materials, and leather accents. What looks like metal most likely is, and the S7 delivers plenty of that with unique brushed aluminum throughout. Carbon fiber trim is also available. Across the doors, the two-tone color scheme blends nicely with the aluminum and the shape of the dash. There's storage down below, and all of your power accessories mounted on the door handle. You also have two-person memory with easy exit function and power folding mirrors with blind spot monitoring. This S7 comes with the optional quilted leather which evokes a more tailored bespoke feeling. They're quite comfortable and supportive with a touch of color accent stitching. The power adjustments are simple and are coupled with four-way power lumbar. There's also a manual cushion down below for extra thigh support. Up on top, you have adjustable headrests, adjustable seat belts with numerous airbags, and all nicely finished off with the S7 logo branded on the seat bags. As you go down below, you have aluminum accented threshold plates and aluminum sport pedals. The steering wheel is full power tilt telescoping with the unique S design sport leather wrap steering wheel specific to this model. The brushed aluminum traces across the center of the dash while you have some polished bright work around the air vents and speedometer cluster. There's also a heads up display and a night vision camera which I'll show that a little bit later in the video. So let's go and see if she sounds. There is a rev limiter in park and neutral around 4,000 RPM. Before we go ahead and shut her up, you'll notice that the glass is kind of overhanging a little bit. It actually stays like that until you close the door where it goes back into the door. Just the way it's designed and how it flushes up against the B pillar. you also notice when you're pulling up the window, it actually will slow down right before it gets up to its contact. Same thing with down below. So it's extremely quiet. Now, like I mentioned earlier, the S7 only comes in the prestige trim, which means it comes with pretty much every option Audi offers in one of their modern cars, including a premium 15-speaker Bang & Olufsen advanced surround sound system. One of the cool things about Bang & Olufsen systems is the fact that each vehicle that they're in, they have their own little unique nuance and styling cue to them. This particular vehicle, for example, the tweeters automatically rise out of the dash once you activate the um, audio system. There's also an LCD mobile media telemetrics navigation interface built into the dash right there that automatically flips out also when you activate the audio system. It's pretty much your standard Audi navigation system with the quadrants set up so it has different options in all four of the quadrants depending on which menu you're in. This is your main home screen where it has all the system functions such as car, navigation, radio, you name it. It's all controlled via this little aluminum controller down in the center console. These four buttons correspond to the different quadrants I was talking about earlier. This button, you twist left and right to go between the different options and click down for enter. You can also access the different menus via those manual buttons right there if you didn't want to use the wheel and scroll through the system yourself. And the audio system is just absolutely fantastic. Plenty of treble and balanced bass response. It doesn't get too much better than Bang & Olufsen. Yeah. 
Side curtain airbags, hands-free Bluetooth microphone located on either side of the vehicle so the passengers are heard equally, full LED interior illumination, as well as an auto dimming rear view mirror. And up top you have your garage home link, LED interior illumination as well as reading lamps, as well as a padded sunglass container up front. Not to mention the controls for your fully automatic sunroof. So we'll go ahead and start off with Tone, which shows your equalizer settings as well as your B&O surround sound settings, as well as system volume, navigation, voice guidance volume, as well as telephone. Down below that is your main radio screen, where it shows all of your different stations in the area, as well as HD radio, and there's also standard satellite radio. Your presets up top, Various functions down below, such as manual tuning, seeking, and the like. Switching between modes, as well as your radio settings. Down below that is media, so you have iPod, auxiliary, USB integration. The system is also hard drive based and it also has Bluetooth connectivity. And since the system is hard drive based, you can also import music and media, MP3 files, and store it on the integrated jukebox. You can also use the SD card input if you desire. Then down to navigation, equipped with Google Earth, the vehicle can also double as a Wi-Fi hotspot. Your route settings are up in the top corner, destination input, your address and directory, navigation settings, as well as information, real-time traffic updates located up top. Vehicle information again, just another way to easily access it. Audi Connect, concierge services, as well as traffic settings. Your hands-free Bluetooth telephone, it'll automatically ask you to pair it. If not, they'll have the little dialing pad and you can store all of your contacts, voice dialing, pretty much standard Bluetooth connectivity. But what's really neat are all the car assists. You can basically customize every aspect of this vehicle to perform exactly the way you want it, from the engine, the suspension, steering, engine sound, as you can see. But you can pretty much see, it's a pretty neat system. You can raise and lower the vehicle, if you think you're going to go over a little bit rougher terrains or rougher pavement. You can also control those individually. As well as customize an individual aspects of the vehicle from service and maintenance, putting the wiper up into a service position, specific vehicle settings and personalizable options, driver's assist, As well as air conditioning, have the cabin recirculate so it doesn't ever get too hot on a sunny day. Not to mention you set your time up top, as well as the system menu here to change any of the factory settings of the system. But in a nutshell, that's pretty much all of the basic features of the navigation system in the Audi S7. As we come down the center console, like I mentioned earlier, the vehicle can also double as a Wi-Fi hotspot. It's located behind this little Audi multimedia faceplate. You just hit that open button, and there's a little spot for a SIM card, as well as two SD cards. Your in-dash CD player, parking sensors, rear spoiler activation, as well as your traction control. Down below that, you have a standard quad zone climate control system with independent temperature adjustments for each of the four passengers. Now up front, you can also independently adjust the zones as well as the fan speed. So you have your standard temperature adjustment on either side, and it also shows up in the screen as you adjust it. All with nerd aluminum finished buttons, three-stage heated seats. Your fan speed in different zones are located down below and you change those by pressing on it and then using the same buttons here. As you can see, there's also automatic so it'll change the different zones um, as the system sees need to. Pretty simple. And as we continue down the aluminum accent center console, you'll notice the side panels are also accented in leather and color accent stitching. There's a little bit of storage up front here. An electronic parking brake, 
pull up to activate, push, put your foot on the brake and push down to deactivate. There's also a little electronic number pad here that also houses your um, preset stations that you can press here rather than going through the system itself. All of the system controls, like I showed you earlier, your volume is well seek, two cup holders, and a full leather stitch center console, it's two tier. And also houses your USB and auxiliary iPod integration with a 12 volt power outlet. Now as far as the steering wheel, your radio controls as well as hands-free telephone and voice commands are located off to the right. Help. Please choose one of the following topics. All radio commands. Commands for selecting a station and band. Commands for station list and... Off to the left is your driver information controls. The driver information screen is located in that little thin film transistor display between the speedometer cluster. All the way over to the left are your vehicle diagnostics as well as trip and fuel data. Click it on over to your radio, telephone, and navigation. In each screen there's also a little sub-menu. So you can change the sources, have a digital speedometer, and more. There's also a night vision camera that also shows up in the middle of the speedometer cluster. Your automatic wiper is located to the right, and cruise control down below. Off to the left hand side of the steering wheel, amongst your lighting controls, is your control for your heads up display, that beams your speed readout up onto the windshield. You can raise and lower it. Alrighty. Good, shut her down. And we'll check out the back seat. Back seat room is pretty typical of what you'd expect out of a car in this sedan coupe category. The rear windows, just as the front and the S7, are also frameless. Feature the full padded trim, brushed aluminum accenting. And once you get in, backseat room is pretty adequate. People over six feet might have to duck their head a little bit when they come in. And individuals much taller than that, they might get a little bit tight in the back seat. Not to mention the beautiful hand-stitched leather in the back seat as well. And they also fold for more cargo space. The back seats are actually pretty comfortable. They're nicely bolstered across the sides as well as your back and have a pretty reasonable amount of lower back support. I'm around 5'11", I probably have about an inch left of head space and probably three, four inches of leg space. So you can see what I meant about the six foot limit. Down below are the controls for the rear air conditioning as well as two 12 volt power outlets. Rear illumination. You also have side curtain airbags in the rear, as well as the Bluetooth microphones up in the headliner, so all the passengers can be equally heard. So let's go and check out the rest of the vehicle, shall we? Of course, one of the best things about hatchbacks is the cargo space potential. Open up the standard power liftgate and you'll be glad to see around 24 and a half cubic feet of space. The trunk is inviting with polished entry guards and plush carpet. There's also storage pockets on either side and it's also illuminated. The best part is, with the seats folded down, your cargo space increases significantly. For extra privacy, there's also cargo covers mounted on the deck lid.
The passenger seat also features the same power adjustments that you find on the driver's seat, including that manual thigh support. Good size glove box, lined in velour. The S7 is a nice blend of performance between the standard A7 and the ultra high performance RS7. With unique interior styling and comfort combined with a sleek aggressive exterior, the S7 is quite the looker with the performance to back it up. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed this detailed look at the 2013 Audi S7. Be sure to stay tuned next time. There's a lot more where that came from. Take care, everybody.